Hello and welcome to Gearock Farms. It's another cold spring day. It's the last day of April while I'm filming this and we had a pretty mild week, typical spring week where high of 65, low of 40 at night. But uh, now on the weekend here, down to a high of 35 and crazy windy. As I was pulling in the farmyard here past our silage pile, the tarp was flailing in the wind and starting to rip back and pull back. Thankfully we caught it early enough and pinned it back down, but man, this, this spring weather is not letting go, but at least we were able to get a lot done last week and, and uh, this morning we're finishing up milking here. Dad, he just started the wash and uh, we're gonna put away this, this brown Swiss cow here. We're, we're drying her up. She's uh, one of the twins of uh, brown Swiss, so it'll be interesting to see if she has twins herself being that she has that uh, gene in her. But we're gonna bring you guys along with us this morning. We're gonna get things cleaned up here, take care of some different odds and ends on the farm. I got a couple different cows I want to dry up before I give them grass. So maybe give them a week away from the grass. She just said to me, you think she's going to have twins, bro? Well, she, see, she's a twin. And I think it was, would that have been her last? No, that would have been two, two lactations ago she had twins. I mean, I could bump the calf already or the calves and she's like three and a half almost four months out yet, which is kind of rare to bump. She didn't milk a lot yet. So I think nature, what they do, you know, the body knows that it needs to dry out. So even Mason's like, how come this cow don't milk that good anymore? So then, you know, you put her on pasture. She's not gonna cost us nothing to be there. Yep. Get more time to grow her calves. We're gonna start letting the cows out, feed the calves, things like that, and then clean up the barn. Dad's in our skid steer now with our nice scraper attachment. It's uh, got a rubber rubber piece on, on every angle. So it kind of flows with the barnyard better and scrapes up better than a bucket would.
So we got most of the manure scraped up now, as you can see here in the yard where dad was working with that skid steer, that uh, attachment does a really nice job. That rubber and a soft edge like that allows it to kind of curve to the environment versus a bucket. On our farm, as you guys probably know, nothing's really flat and dead level and perfect. It's all kind of slope and, and dips and dives all over the place. So using that attachment here in the spring when everything's wet, it does a really good job at cleaning things up. We wouldn't be able to use it a lot during the winter because it freezes. And then during the summer, it gets kind of where it's too dry. But in conditions like this, that attachment does a wonderful job cleaning things up. Against it here. <laughs> so it's bent before we, sh before the cow bent it again. So now it's just it's really bent. Kind of, it matches. It's still doing its job though. It's a shield. It's uh, keeping somebody from getting their fingers in there or something like that. Well, all right. Or anything. Well, last night it was raining, so I think they were in here a little tighter by that, you know, bumping around. There we go, we got some tools. We can pull that cover off and try to bend that back. And then keep on moving, cleaning things up here. Framing on I mean, this machine is only like 80 years old. You know, you wouldn't think we'd have to fix it. And you know what brand this is? Headland. Headland. They used to say on the side, this shield, actually my cousin, he was in the heating and cooling and he, uh, this had to be 20 years ago now, but he'd make ductwork stuff. He had all the stuff to do that with. So he actually made this and then used this old framing and you know it's amazing how you can imitate that stuff so it doesn't have the logos on it anymore because the old one was I know, falling apart rusting too maybe because they were actually this one's under the roof but that's actually it's meant to be like up above the skid steer ain't it? yeah it was on or, the end or see the, so the this part air spreader all the here the old chute i just cut it off and i laid it right into the concrete is what i did so it's actually concrete underneath the metal, so it may even be wore through. You can see here, it's actually wore through. Like right here. That's concrete there. And that's what usually happened with them shoots. They'd wear through and the manure's falling out instead of going up into the spreader. So then when we went to the auger, then I decided, okay, we're going to make sure we get concrete underneath. And then up inside, where this whole bracket attaches to the other part, I think I got old sh plowshares. I welded them in there and then so they sunk down into the concrete because it's almost impossible to get it to come up into that cavity so that this whole piece doesn't let loose after everything finally you know eventually rust back you know because it's gonna because this is what's doing all your pulling all the way to the other end of the barn and the barn is how long well 80 feet so, so 80 got, feet each way you know right here you're, you're probably a, well then you got your side so i mean it's a lot of and it can be a lot of pull. Right. So this basically what it does is it's bracing against the the concrete, you know, this whole framing and and then you got your turnbuckle here that you know, there's some thread here you can every month or so you gotta maybe give it a couple rounds just to keep your chain reasonably snug so it ain't falling off. Yeah, uh, if you watch the barn cleaner chain video you've seen that we had to loosen that way up so we could uh, take things apart. And then the way this works, you got your electric motor, the belt driving it says, it, what it does is it gears itself down. So you got the belt, you know, and it going from one to the other until it, it gears itself down so this isn't running nearly as fast, of course. And that gives it this, uh, but that gives you more power. Yeah, more torque. More torque because you're gearing it down. You know, through this. Some barn cleaners would run slower. I know a lot of guys said mine actually runs pretty fast. So I timed it one time just be, when we put the auger in, I thought, okay, how long does it take for everything to go all the way around? And then I gave it, you know, 
because we got to run a little straw in the auger in the winter to wipe out the auger. It's, it's about nine and a half minutes if we have all our ducks in a row, which basically means all the manures in the gutter are ready, and we just turn it on, and then we're bedding cattle, or bedding stalls or whatever during the meantime. And then once it all runs out, about nine and a half minutes to clean gutter, which isn't bad. I mean, the longer the barn, the longer it's going to go. But I was just thinking, you know, during a day that goes by that I don't have to fix up around here. There was another question that somebody asked, and it, it made sense. I think it was when I was cleaning out the heifer bedding pack, you know, with the bobcat going back and forth, and, and uh, how many gates have we bumped and tore off with the skid steer? And I believe, because I, I know there's, you know, I've got brothers that are farming and different people around here, but it's usually a gate gets mounted and it's not necessarily tore off by the cattle or from use. It's usually bumped with some type of manure cleaning equipment or somebody trying to get bales in or, or something. I even seen where they tear off rafters because they bring up a wrong bale, get way up in the air and you hit something. You end up grabbing the, uh, the rafters or something. So you get, once that happens to you, and you're if you're the guy that's got to fix it you're not going to do it again if you're consciously or more you're likely less, less likely to mess up to know you. where your limit is and my skid steer in the back framing it's about at this level where it would bump first a lot of times it's curbs and places that are a little less more forgiving i guess where you might scrape a little bit but that's just it there's you know there's so much power there you, you bump it and go another half inch it's broke off <laughs> so anyway, like you said, if you got to fix that stuff, it goes with everything. If you're the guy that's got to fix it, you're more likely to be more careful and cautious. So it, it, it has happened, but I got to say, though, for doing things long enough, it, it's rare enough. And you got to keep it that way. <laughs> that's actually an open motor. There's a screen up in here, and, you know, those usually ain't recommended where you got flammable bedding or whatever, but it's, the, it's a vent to the so the motor don't get hot, but it is under a shield. And then, the, uh, and then we do have all our wiring in this conduct because it, it does get, like if we're here working, scraping things down, you, you don't end up nicking the wiring. But the plus of it all is, is it's all off when you're not here. You know, it's off at the breaker, at the switch inside. So nothing here is live when you're not here anyway. So if something would go wrong, we're not gonna replace that motor because I got a feeling uh, for one thing, they're, they're crazy money, but um, I got a feeling that's a better motor than anything we can buy today. You know, that's still original. That motor's way older than I am. It's probably 60 years old. And I don't ever remember having to do anything. I did replace these roller, these chains, I think, twice. And then the belt, one day the belt was slipping quite a bit. And, uh, and it's kind of like a safety net. So like, like if one of the, the, the grates happen to slip in or sometimes it, it, on the other end, the scraper will fall in there, the straw will grab it. If you're not right there, then it starts wedging up it, and it's better to have this. Slip. Yeah, you're not, yeah, you're not gonna break a chain or something. You're gonna break or slip the belt before Which is, we break any bigger it's items. Like a, it's like a safety thing. So then I got to thinking, well, the belt, you know, it's kind of cracked up already. So I did snug it a little bit, but you know, as soon as you start doing that and you're putting more pressure on things, then it's going to break on some cold days. So I did take the belt to town. I got, got one that's as close as I could get to the size and I was going to put it on. Then I thought, no, I shouldn't put it on because it only take you a second to put this on. I don't even know if you'd have to loosen anything and probably can just slip it over and turn it and put it on. You see how fast it was to take that cover off. But, so you know, this belt, you might be looking in the shop, but if you're right here, along with some other pieces, you know, you try to keep your stuff close by, because it's not gonna be a day when you got all this extra time and these things happen, so. Yeah, so those of you that, uh, you dairy guys or cattle guys, let us know what kind of systems you had in your barns or what you have in your barn currently. Be interested to hear about it. So really, we, this is the oldest unit as far as the barn cleaning part, that, that's still the original, but we replaced our wheels chain you know some of the concrete stuff in the barn was was redone a little bit the the pedal cleaner i mean it's been welded up i would bet 30 times and i i think mason he's the metal guy we should actually get some new iron and redo it and build a whole new one yeah but there ain't a lot to it but i think because of uh i i had so much tension on the spring which is good because then it really grabs the manure and cleans the pedals night but then it Every time she comes off a paddle, it's like smacking it with a hammer. And after a million and a half times doing that, fatigue.
So we have all the bedding laid out and the hay laid out here in the dairy barn. I was just about to lay down some lime. My dad and I were talking and I thought I'd bring it up to you guys, but we're kind of surprised that the dairy herd didn't go out to pasture this afternoon here. They all are kind of hanging out in the barnyard here. Oh man, he must have forgot to close the gate. Good thing I came out here to talk about the dairy herd. Come on. Catch a gate open. That's the nice thing about being a smaller farm and a and, uh, family living on the farm here with my, you know, my parents and my two brothers are still home. So things like that get caught versus if we lived off the farm, we would have left and then our whole herd would have been out by the time we came back. But anyways, as you can see, they're, they're hanging out in the barnyard today. They must kind of just know that the day is going to stay dreary and it ain't worth going out there because because my dad has had that pasture right behind the barn here open for the past two and a half, maybe almost three weeks now. And I wish we would have caught it on video, but there was a day where we got some snow here in this weird spring where we had a, a day and a half of snow and there was a lot there was like over five inches of snow and they still went up there to graze and they were picking through the snow getting at that good luscious green grass that's one heck of a story that's not something you see all the time especially for us with our dairy herd maybe some of the guys with beef herds and and uh, things like that they might have cattle on pasture over the winter that's not odd to them but to us to see uh, our cows grazing in the snow is it's something to see for us so neat little story for you guys but too bad they didn't go out to pasture i love seeing cows on pasture i love showing you guys our cows on pasture because it's just a it's an awesome thing it's uh it's beautiful and relaxing and brings me a lot of joy i hope it brings you guys some joy too too bad the the girls decided to stay home today but i'm sure by the time i get this video out to you guys they'll be grazing every day and every night consistently and we'll be able to soak it all in then. All right, that's gonna be it for the video. Thanks for sticking to the end. Just a simple one doing morning chores here. And a uh, good thing that uh, that small uh, breakdown, I don't even know if you can call it that, but got that taken care of and and uh, got all the chores taken care of and it's gonna be a solid day. So thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to comment and uh, share the video. It helps us out a lot. But anyways, that's it for now. Make sure to check out our other videos.